Okay, so we're going to look at a question involving um, these equations. So we'll take some copper wire, thin copper wire, with a diameter of 1.6 millimeters, uh, with a current of 5 amps. That's a pretty large current for that diameter. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll run with it. And we'll calculate the drift speed of the electrons inside that copper wire. So we're going to assume, the assumption we're going to make is that each copper atom contributes one electron. So when we're looking at the copper, we're seeing our, our, our massive uh, lattice of copper atoms. And for, for each copper atom there, there, are, there is in that lattice, then one electron will be part of the metallic bonding and will be free to conduct the electricity. So some additional data that we'll need to know is the density of copper, and the mass density of copper is 8.9 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cube. So we have a meter cube of copper, we'll have 8,900 uh, kilograms. And the molar mass of copper, taken from a periodic table, is 63.55 grams per mole. So for every 63.55 grams we have of copper, we have one mole of copper atoms. So I equals NAVQ is the equation. We're looking for V for drift velocity, so what do we need to know? We need to know I, we need to know N, we need to know A, and we need to know Q. I is given for us in the question, and Q is just uh, one electron, so that's the, uh, the charge carrier is an electron. Um, so it is N and A that we need to calculate a little bit more, and N will be the most complicated one of those. So N is the number of charge carriers electrons per cubic meter. Well, how do we work that out? Well, we know that 8.9 times 10 to the 3 is the number of kilograms that we have in one meter cubed. So 8.9 times 10 to the 3 divided by 63.55 times 10 to the minus 3, which is the number of um, kilograms that each mole takes up, will give us the number of moles in one meter cubed of copper. It's 140 times 10 to the 3 moles in one meter cubed. So that is 8.43 times 10 to the 28 actual atoms. So multiplying the number of moles per meter cubed by Avogadro's constant, will give you the number of atoms per meter cubed. So 8.43 times 10 to 28 is the number of atoms per meter cubed. And we've said that each atom donates one electron. So 8.43 times 10 to 28 electrons per meter cubed. That is N. A is the cross-sectional area. It's just pi r squared, pi uh, times the radius. We've given the uh, 1.6 millimeters of the diameter. So the radius is 0 0.8 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared gives you a cross-sectional area of 2.01 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared. Given every um, one of my answers to these little points to uh, three significant figures, because it, it seems about right given the quantities uh, that we've been provided with. The current is 5.0 amps, and the charge, as we've said, is an electron, the elementary charge, so 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. You often see electron charges given as negative 1.6, but for these, um, for the drift velocity calculation, the, the negative sign doesn't make any sense. So there you go. We now have N, A, V, and, uh, N, A, I, and Q. So we can calculate V, the drift velocity, drift speed. Rearranging is I divided by N, A, Q. Plug the numbers in. 5 over 8.43 times 10 to 28. Multiplied by 2.01 times 10 to the minus 6. Multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Those bottom parts all multiplied together to give you 27,111, give or take. And 5 divided by that number gives you 0 0.00018 meters per second, um, which is 0 0.18 millimeters per second in a sort of more human scale unit. That's a very small number. A bit of a surprising number often when you first see that. By the way, as a, these electrons aren't generally still, they're, they're moving around uh, with sort of a thermal velocity. Don't forget these electrons actually are, are what make um, copper a good conductor of heat and the, the thermal velocity of electrons we actually know is approximately um, it's about 1.6 times 10 to the 6 meters per second at room temperature so we're talking about something in the order of, of, of millions of meters per second for 
the firm of velocity. So that's kind of a random movement. But superimposed on top of that is this drift velocity of a mere, in this case, 0 0.18 millimeters per second. And if we made a larger, if we made the cross-sectional area larger, thicker wire, by the same current, that velocity will actually get even slower. So when you turn the lights on, when you hit the switch and the lights turn on instantly, the actual electrons are only moving through that wire very slowly indeed. However, the actual electricity travels much faster. Okay? This is because the, the knock-on effect of applying the current, all of the electrons start to move together at the same time. It's not like you have to have them moving along and only you know, traveling at that velocity. So the speed of velocity of the electrons is very different to the speed or velocity of the, like, of, the, of the electrical current of the electrical field. Very different indeed. Okay, but that's how to use those equations, which is part of the requirements of this uh, particular topic, so problems using the drift speed equation. So I hope that's useful. Thank you very much for listening.